Well, shalom, everyone. This is Evangelist August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. We want to thank you so much for tuning in on this Wednesday afternoon. We are coming to you live from our main headquarters here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Another beautiful summer day out there. Not as hot today, but uh, we will take it. Some rainy spots here and there. We got some more rain uh, on the way. But uh, we're so grateful that you have decided to join us on another Bible prophecy update as we look at the geopolitical situation going on in Israel, the Middle East, and around the world. And we give a prophetic perspective on that geopolitical situation from a plain sense interpretation of Bible prophecy. And so we're grateful that uh, all of you have decided to join us Wednesday through Friday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless otherwise noted. So listen, invite a friend to tune in and join us. And as you well know, we upload these videos to my YouTube page as well as to Twitter and my website. So if you miss a live episode, then go to my YouTube page, August Rosado, and you can watch the video. You can subscribe to our YouTube page as well. And we have over 500 videos on YouTube. And if you want to look at all the late breaking news stories that I post on my Twitter account, then follow me. Uh, August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. That's on my Twitter page. August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. And you can read all of my late breaking news stories there on Twitter, all of our Bible prophecy teaching on YouTube. And so take advantage of that. Visit my website. TodayInBibleProphecy.org Navigate around the website. Go to our store. You can order our, our Holy Land gifts. Books that I have written on Bible prophecy. You can also join us on an upcoming Bible prophecy tour to Israel. Because of COVID-19, we had to reschedule twice already our prophecy tour to Israel. We had to cancel it in March, cancel for June, we rescheduled for October 29th to November the 8th, 2020. We'd love to have you join us on a Bible prophecy tour of the Holy Land, visiting Israel and Jordan. While in Jordan, we'll spend two nights in Jordan, that's east of the Jordan River. We will go to North Jordan to the area of Amman, Jordan, and we will visit Mount Nebo, where Moses viewed the Promised Land. Then we'll drive south to southern Jordan to Petra, where the Jewish remnant, I'll be talking about that today, where the Jewish remnant will be held up for the last half of the tribulation period. You need to go to Israel at least once in your lifetime. I'm praying that by September, Israel will reopen their borders. Right now, they're not allowing anyone into the country. And they said that they will reassess the situation by September the 1st. We're hoping that by September, at least by mid-September, end of September, we will know for sure if we're going to be going to Israel on October the 29th. So please pray that Israel will open their borders, that this COVID situation is done with once and for all, and that we can go back to the Holy Land, back to the land of Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. So if you've never been to Israel, you need to go at least once in your lifetime. Let me say shalom to Michael Popes, 
Artemio Cruz, John Webb, Alice Reed, and Michael says his next episode will be on the Perpetual Virgin and Jesus siblings. That will stir the pot. Well, you know, Michael, no matter what you teach today, it's going to stir the pot. It's going to stir the pot with the world, and surprise, it's going to stir the pot with people in the church. I know it sounds ironic, doesn't it? So, you know, it is what it is. As long as we teach Bible prophecy for its plain sense interpretation, because it's abused today. Christians abuse this topic more than the cults do. <laughs> Isn't that sad? I had one guy send me an email, and he's trying to promote his book to me. And the name of his book is called The Three Raptures of the Church. And I said, sir, where do you get this nonsense from? I call it Disneyland Doctrine, because that's what it is. They make stuff up, folks. That's what they do. They make stuff up. Think outside the box to make a name for themselves and sell their books. We don't need to do that. People like that you need to stay away from. I mean, I'm on YouTube, but you look at the nonsense that's on YouTube today, it's unbelievable. So you're gonna, I, I know I say this a lot, I, I, I know it's, it's repetitious, but if you're going to watch somebody on YouTube or somebody on Christian TV or listen to someone on Christian radio, make sure you do your homework on them and make sure that they are biblical. If not, you need to stay away from these people. I mean, the, the, the false doctrine that's in the church today, it's, it's, un, it's unprecedented. It really is. You know, it, it, it doesn't take much for Christians to buy every wind of doctrine out there today. Or well, now they're giving attention to some guy on YouTube who's claiming to have prophetic dreams concerning the United States of America. And Christians are jumping on board with this. Promoting this guy and sending his videos out. Don't send that trashy stuff to me. Please don't send that stuff to me because I'm only going to delete it anyway. You know, stop getting your doctrine from people like that. Get your doctrine from the Bible. Get your doctrine from the Word of God. Not from some bozo on YouTube claiming to have prophetic dreams concerning the United States of America. He's a false prophet, and I'll tell you what. Right off the bat, you should reject someone like that. A red flag should have immediately popped up in your head when he said he's having prophetic dreams concerning the United States of America. Why? There is no specific references to America in Bible prophecy. So where is he getting that from? Himself. Again, like this guy trying to sell his book on the three raptures of the church, they're only trying to make a name for themselves. They're not, giving the, they're not giving God glory for anything. It's all about them. So we really need to be careful. So John Webb says they make it up, they make it up, and people pay big money to listen. That's what they do. That's what they do. They pay big, big money to buy their books, their videos, and all this, this other stuff. So we really need to be careful. So, guys, I'm going to be talking about today the dragon, the woman, and the eagle. And even with that, Christians are misinterpreting that. Why are they misinterpreting because they're not allowing the scriptures to interpret scripture. You know, when we read apocalyptic literature, we must allow the Bible to interpret that apocalyptic literature. Not me. Not some other prophecy guy. The Bible needs to interpret that script, that apocalyptic literature. And I'm going to give you an example 
on how we should do this today. And when you apply that inductive Bible study, when you compare Scripture with Scripture, you will see how plain sense makes sense. How doctrine fits like a hand in a glove. And you will be able to avoid the fluff and the nonsense that, that's being propagated out there today by Christian prophecy teachers, especially on YouTube. You got to watch out for these people, folks. All because someone sends you a video and they say, hey, you need to watch this guy. Right there alone is a red flag. Right there alone is a given red flag. <clears throat> Get your doctrine from Scripture. I don't bother watching any of this stuff. I really don't. I don't. I told you already. I don't watch Christian TV. I don't listen to Christian radio. I've had enough of that stuff. And I only watch only a select few people on YouTube, like Dr. Jimmy D. Young, Dr. Ed Heinsohn, Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum, people like that. All those other guys, I don't know them. I ain't watching them. And that's not to say that all of them are false teachers, but a good chunk of them are. So... I, I gotta be careful. I have to be extremely careful. Because Christians today have bought the farm, doctrinally speaking. They bought the farm. And you gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. As to who you watch today, and you got to be careful who you listen to today. We need to get back, ladies and gentlemen, to biblical integrity. That's lost in the church today. That's gone. That's been thrown out the window. We need to get back to biblical integrity. We need to get back to doctrinal purity. We need to get back to a plain sense interpretation of Scripture. And the only way you're going to do that is if you allow Scripture to interpret scripture for its plain sense interpretation. Looking at it for its grammatical, contextual, historical, and very important, literal interpretation. If you're going to use symbolism, it's because the Bible, it's telling the Bible itself is telling you to do so. And if the Bible's using symbols, the Bible itself will interpret that symbolism for you. But if the Bible doesn't use symbolism in that area, you don't use it. You don't take it upon yourself to give it your own interpretation, your own twist, your own bias. You need to check that at the door, man. We need to get back. The biblical integrity. So when you visit my website today in BibleProphecy.org and you know that you've been following me for a while now, you enjoy our Bible prophecy teaching because you know with me, I never give you any sensationalism, never give you any hype, no drama, no three rapture nonsense, no August was out, I, I had a prophetic dream last night. You don't get that nonsense with me. I don't <clears throat> pick up political candidates and tell you I think they're the Antichrist. Or I think that guy's the false prophet. We don't engage in that nonsense here. And we don't associate with others who do. We stay far away from them. All I give you, and if you're here for the first time, you'll see what I'm talking about. I only give you plain sense interpretation of Scripture. If the plain sense makes sense, don't look for any other sense or you're going to end up with nonsense. And when it comes to Bible prophecy today, there is 90% nonsense out there. So what I want you to do right now is look at your Bibles at Revelation chapter 12. And I want you to look with me in verses 13 and 14. Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. 
Let me just read a couple of uh, remarks here. Um, John Webb says they make it up and people pay big money. It's insane. Of course it is. Um, let me see. Uh, Michael says, and accountability among the brethren. Yeah. And the thing is, there's no accountability anymore. You know, we just go out, we just, they're just going out there teaching what they want to teach so that it fits their own doctrine, their own little interpretation. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, it says this, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, plural, and half the time from the face of the serpent. So we have three personalities here in the tribulation period. We have the dragon, the woman, and who is the great eagle? Man, I've heard so many crazy interpretations as to who the great eagle is. We'll just let the Bible tell us who the great eagle is. The Bible's going to tell us who the dragon is. The Bible's going to tell us who the woman is. The Bible's going to tell us who the great eagle is. There's going to be no guessing games here or who we think it might be. The Bible unambiguously will tell us who the dragon, the woman, and the great eagle is. So make sure you have your Bibles open. Have a pen and paper handy. Of course, later on, we're going to upload this video to not only my Facebook timeline, but also to my YouTube page. This Sunday, July 26th, I'm going to be speaking at Adams Square Baptist Church in Worcester, Massachusetts. So if you live anywhere in the area of Worcester or any of those surrounding towns, I will be there at 11 a.m. Adams Square Baptist Church Sunday morning at 11 a.m. only. No night service, no Sunday school, just the morning service. It will be live streamed on my Facebook timeline. So if uh, you're looking to tune in live, we'll be there live and we'll also have it uploaded. On August the 30th, I am going to be preaching in Wyoming, Rhode Island, not the state of Wyoming, but Wyoming, Rhode Island, and I will be there uh, with uh, Brother John Juno. And Brother John Juno, Brother John Juno pastors that church. He's a, a, a dear friend of mine. I'm just going to bring up the name of the church has been... It's it's been a um, a while since uh, I've been there, but uh, let's see here, brother John Juno. Uh, okay, now it's not um, coming up yet. Let me just put pastor. <laughs> oh boy, let's see. Hold on a second, guys. Just bear with me, okay? And uh, let's see if it's coming up here. Uh, here we go. Wood, not, I think it's uh, Woodlawn Baptist Church. Nope, that is not it either, folks. I am sorry. Maybe I misspelled his name here. I hate this. I should have had this uh, brought up already. And uh, let's see. I think we have it right here. No, no, folks. I'm going to have to get a few. This is just uh, wasting our time here. So I apologize for that. But John Juno. Wood River, not Woodlawn, thank you. Wood River Baptist Church, thank you, Patty. Wood River, I thought it was Woodlawn, it's, not, it's Wood River Baptist Church, Wyoming, Rhode Island, August the 30th. I will be doing Sunday school. It's not the glasses, it's, I just, it was the wrong, uh, it was the wrong uh, name of the church there. Woodlawn Baptist is in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Wood River Baptist is in 
Wyoming, Rhode Island. So I'm going to do their Sunday school, 10 a.m., and their morning service, 11 a.m., and Sunday night, 6 p.m. So make sure that you're there for that if you live anywhere in that uh, area. So, all right. Now, let's uh, get right to it. As you well know, the book of Revelation is filled with apocalyptic literature. Now, when we say apocalyptic literature, those are prophetic books of the Bible that use a lot of symbolism. But the key to interpreting the symbolism is that you must look for a literal interpretation behind the symbolism. If you fail to do that, then you're going to get confused and you're going to get messed up doctrinally. Those books that use apocalyptic literature are Ezekiel, Daniel, Zechariah, and the book of Revelation. Apocalyptic books that use apocalyptic literature. Apocalyptic literature, uh, that you know, would be a challenge for some to interpret. But again, I, I must stress this. The key to interpreting that apocalyptic literature is the Bible will interpret that apocalyptic literature. Scripture interprets Scripture. And that goes for apocalyptic literature as well. The biased mind of the Bible reader should not dictate apocalyptic literature. The Bible alone is going to do this. So when we read apocalyptic literature, okay, like the dragon, that's apocalyptic literature. Who's that talking about? How do we interpret that? How do we know the identity of the dragon? Apocalyptic literature, the woman. Who's the woman? How do we interpret who the woman is in Revelation? How do we identify her? The Bible will interpret that. What about the great eagle? Who is the great eagle? How do we interpret who the great eagle is? The Bible will help us to do that. The Bible will interpret for us what these symbols are, not the mind of the Bible reader. We should read Scripture especially Bible prophecy, for its plain sense interpretation. If symbols are used, the Bible will give us a clear meaning of these symbols. We see the word dragon mentioned 13 times in the book of Revelation. The word woman is found 15 times in the book of Revelation. The dragon in Revelation chapter 12 is persecuting the woman. He seeks her demise. The word eagle is found only twice in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 7 referring to the four living creatures that Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel chapter number 10 and Revelation chapter 12 verse 14 referring to the eagle assisting the woman in fleeing from the dragon. And man, I have heard some far-out interpretations as to who the, who the eagle is. We need not to confuse the woman in Revelation chapter 12 with the woman in Revelation chapter 17. They are not the same. The woman in Revelation chapter 17 is the false church. She is called a woman six times in Revelation chapter 17, and she's called a whore three times in Revelation chapter 17. She is the false church centered on a seven-hill city in Rome. The woman is the false church in Rome in Revelation chapter 17. However, the woman 
in Revelation chapter 12 is special to God. And the dragon is seeking to destroy the woman in order to stop the promises of God concerning the coming kingdom. The kingdom that will emanate from the holy city of Jerusalem. So now, let us apply inductive Bible study. That just simply means you compare scripture with scripture. Inductive Bible study helps us to ascertain as to the identity of the dragon, the woman, and the eagle. Remember, please remember, the Bible is its best own interpreter. We need to check our biases at the door, which is the reason why Bible prophecy has become so abused and misused in the church today to the point of being laughable. You heard me. To the point of being laughable. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 1, it reads this, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. A lot of apocalyptic literature being used there. John the Apostle, a first century Jew and apostle of the Lord Jesus, sees a woman clothed with the sun. The moon is under her feet. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. How do we interpret this. This is where you apply inductive Bible study. I want you to compare Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 to Genesis chapter 37 and verse number 9. A clear reading of Genesis chapter 37 verse 9 tells us who the woman is. Let me read for you Genesis chapter 37 and verse number 9. Talking about Jacob. And he dreamed yet another dream. And told it his brethren. And behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance unto me. Genesis 37, 9 is parallel. To Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 1. Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. He marries Rachel, who gave him most of his sons. So the sun would be Jacob. The moon would be Rachel. And the 12 stars would refer to who? Jacob's 12 sons. The 12 tribes of the children of of Israel. The Bible just interpreted for us the apocalyptic literature of Revelation 12 1 telling us who the woman is. The woman is Israel, God's chosen people. And by the way, I also want you to compare Isaiah chapter 54, verses 5 and 6, and Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 7 through 14. Clearly, the woman is Israel. So we just ascertain as to who the woman is. Israel. God's chosen people. The Jewish people. Who is the dragon that is persecuted? The woman. Well, a clear reading of Revelation 12, 9, and parallel to that, Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, tells us exactly who the dragon is. Read in Revelation 12 and verse number 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, that serpent goes back to the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. 
which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Compare that with Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. The Bible just interpreted for us who the dragon is. The dragon in Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Compare Revelation 12 3 to Revelation 12 9 and Revelation chapter 20 verse number 2. The dragon is none other than that old serpent going back to Genesis chapter 3 that deceived Adam and Eve. That old serpent is the devil and Satan. So now the Bible just interpreted for us who the dragon is. It's none other than Satan. The serpent. He seeks to kill the Jews. Now, let me just share a brief report that I got yesterday from the Braybart News Agency. The Braybart News reported that the world Jewish population just reached 14 point five million Jews but the actual count of world jewelry is fourteen million four hundred and ten thousand seven hundred Jews worldwide now Israel has the largest Jewish community with six million seven hundred and forty thousand Jews living in Israel uh, that is followed by Jews in North America with uh, about um, 600,000. In Europe, about 1,072,400. South America, 324,000. Asia, 300,000. Australia and New Zealand, about 120,000. Africa. 74,000 Jews. By the way, let me correct the North America. North America is 6,088,000 Jews. Now, here's what's interesting. Some crazy numbers here. According to Bible prophecy, two-thirds of the Jewish people will lose their lives at the hand of the dragon's henchman, the Antichrist. The second personality of the unholy trinity in Revelation chapter 13, and verse number 1, as well as the false prophet, the third personality of the unholy trinity in Revelation 13, 11. All three of them, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, working in harmony in Revelation chapter 16 and verse number 13. The beast or the Antichrist, is the ruler of the revived Roman Empire. Now, check this out. Crazy. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8 tells us, two-thirds of the Jewish people will be killed at the hands of the Antichrist. Now, the Braybart report said there are 14.5 million Jews worldwide. Okay? Let's take Zechariah's number, Zechariah 13, 8, of two-thirds. Two-thirds of 14.5 million Jews worldwide killed, two-thirds of that would be, you ready for these numbers? 9,666,666. That's, that's crazy. 9,666,666 Jews will die in the tribulation period at the hands of the Antichrist. Again, two-thirds of 14.5 million is 9-666-666. dash 9,666,666. And 66. 
will lose their lives in the tribulation period. But when you read on, Zechariah chapter 13 verse 8 says, A third of the Jewish remnant will survive and will be held up in a special area for the last half of the tribulation period. Now a third of 14.5 million is 4,833,333. So the Jewish population is going to decline big time in the upcoming 70th week of Daniel's prophecy or the seven year period of tribulation. So what's going to happen to that surviving Jewish remnant? The surviving Jewish remnant of, well, 4,333,333 or so will escape with the help of the eagle. Look with me again in Revelation 12, 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half the time. There are some prophecy guys out there today that are saying, well, the great eagle helping the woman in Revelation 12, 14 is none other than the United States of America that will pick up the Jews from Jerusalem and will take them to a safe location on eagle's wings. Since the eagle is the symbol of the United States of America, so I guess the United States of America will send um, Southwest Airlines down there to pick up the Jews, a, a Delta, American Airlines, give me a break. The eagle here is not the United States of America. What, because the eagle is a symbol of America? The eagle was a symbol of, the, of Imperial Rome. 2,000 years ago or so ago. It's not referring to the United States of America. Do you know who the eagle is in Revelation 12, 14? Again, let's apply inductive Bible study. I'm not going to give you the answer, even though I know what the answer is. I'm going to let the Bible give you the answer as to who the eagle is in Revelation 12, 14. Again, we apply inductive Bible study to ascertain more information as to who the eagle is. I want you on your own time to compare Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. But let me read for you. Exodus chapter 19 and verse number 4. Ye have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Who did what to the Egyptians? God. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. And how I bear you on eagles wings. And brought you unto myself. It was God that delivered Israel out of Egypt on eagles' wings to myself. God brought Israel to Mount Sinai, where God said, I brought you unto myself. So, a comparison, parallel, Exodus 19.4 to Revelation 12.14, the eagle is clearly God himself the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. It is not the United States of America because there are no specific prophecies concerning the United States of America. So, in a nutshell, God is the eagle that delivers the woman, Israel, from the dragon, Satan, to what location? To Petra. To Petra where the surviving Jewish remnant is held up for the last half of the tribulation period. Again, read in Revelation 12, 14. Israel is held up there for a time, times, and half a time. We talked about this last week. A time, times, and half a time 
is a Jewish colloquialism for the last half of the tribulation period. The last 1,260 days of the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. At the end of the tribulation period, Jesus will return and destroy the beast and the revived Roman Empire, and he will establish his kingdom for 1,000 years centered in the city of Jerusalem. God will keep his promises to Israel as well as to the church. The church is not Israel, and Israel is not the church. Neither usurps the other. God has a program for Israel that is totally distinct from the program that he has for the church. Neither replaces the other. God has promises for Israel that he's going to keep. Israel's never been replaced by the church. And God has promises for the church. Now, what is the promise for the church? The next main event we call the rapture of the church. The promise to Israel is the coming kingdom. The Davidic, theocratic kingdom to come emanating from the holy city of Jerusalem for 1,000 years with Jesus sitting on David's throne. Doesn't get any better than that. Do you see how simple it is when you apply inductive Bible study? When you let the Bible interpret this apocalyptic literature? Do you see how doctrine fits like a hand in a glove? Do you see how simple it is? How it makes sense? You can't do that when you spiritualize and allegorize everything to make it fit your point of view. That's where the confusion comes in. But when you let Scripture interpret Scripture and you compare Bible with Bible, parallel passages like we just did today, you will get the right doctrine. You will get the right information. And you can avoid the nonsense that's on Christian TV today. Christian radio. Oh, and especially YouTube. We need to restore biblical integrity back, especially to Bible prophecy, one of the most abused and misused doctrines in the church today. We need to restore integrity and credibility back to the wonderful doctrine that permeates at least one-fourth of Scripture, the doctrine of Bible prophecy. So, again, we want to thank all of you for tuning in today. And um, Alice says, part of Satan's plan is to make Bible the Bible appear ludicrous due to all these fake interpretations. And unfortunately, you have Christians to thank for that. Because of these whacked out doctrines, Alice. She says there aren't enough uh, aircraft to even do that. <laughs> no, huh? <laughs> uh, so just logistics alone would uh, negate that theory. That's a, that's a really good point, Alice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Only God can do something like that. He's the eagle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse number 4. Well, as we bring this broadcast to a close, I hope this study lesson was a blessing to you. I hope you tune in tomorrow. Right now, the time looks at, like it's going to be 1.30. I'll, if it isn't, I'll let you know. But 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we look at another Bible prophecy update. Invite a friend. Tune in. Maybe you can give them the link to my Facebook timeline so that they can tune in as well. If our ministry has been a blessing to you, please prayerfully consider helping to support us as we proclaim Yeshua's soon return for the church. You can do that by going to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org, and scroll down to the bottom of the page. Click the Donate button, and you can give a one-time gift 
or you can support us monthly, or it can automatically come out of your checking account. When you click on that donate button, it'll tell you exactly how to do that. Uh, this Sunday, I'm speaking at Adam Square Baptist Church in Worcester, Massachusetts, 11 a.m. They've invited me to come to preach on prophecy. August 30th, I'll be at Wood River Baptist Church. John Juno is the pastor, and we'll be there for their Sunday school, Sunday morning, and their Sunday evening service. August 30th, Wood River Baptist Church. We'll put this on the website later so you can check that out. But this Sunday, I will be with Brother Chris Casey and all of his people there at Adams Square Baptist Church. If you want to join us in Israel, hopefully this fall, October, October 29th, to November the 8th, an 11-day Bible prophecy tour will be in Israel and in Jordan at Mount Nebo in North Jordan where Moses viewed the Promised Land and, you guessed it, Petra, where the Jewish people, the surviving Jewish remnant, will be held up for the last half of the Tribulation period. So, if you haven't been to Israel, you need to go. If not with me, go with someone else, but go with someone who's going to be biblical who's going to teach you the plain sense interpretation of Bible prophecy. And I hope that's what we're doing here. So, pray about that. Pray about helping to support us. And don't forget to follow me on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And look at all of our videos on YouTube. We'll be uploading this video soon on there. And all of my late-breaking news stories on my Twitter account. But my Twitter also feeds into my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org as well. So, hope to see you Thursday, Lord willing, 1.30 p.m. is the tentative time, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So remember, keep looking up. The rapture is so very close. Jesus is coming soon. And, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And uh, we hope to see you Tomorrow, uh, Tammy Tar Tardiff, good to see you. And I, I, I hope the message was a blessing to you. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we will talk to you later. Have a great day. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Practice social distancing. Wear a mask in public. Let's practice common sense here so we can get over this COVID-19. God bless, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.